pint of Timothy Taylor's is one of Britain's most loved ales, and there's so much goes on behind the scenes, all for that taste of Taylor's. Sadly, it's impossible to let loyal fans come and see the beer being brewed because of the labyrinth of old and new buildings, small staircases, narrow passageways, and dedicated brewers concentrating on making that perfect pint. However, this is a unique invitation to take a guided tour by one of Britain's most respected head brewers and see how a pint of Taylor's is created and what makes the beer so special. But first, a bit of history. It all began in 1858 when Timothy Taylor opened a new brewery in Keithley, West Yorkshire. Mr. Taylor hit on a successful formula that the mill workers loved. Very quickly, a large site was needed with a source of pure, clean, tasty water. Taylor's still brew at the Knoll Spring Brewery today, and the beer is more popular than ever. Old buildings have been extended with new, but the brewery has remained a family business with a passion for tradition and quality, all for that taste of Taylor's. But to create the unique flavours of Taylor's, there's a huge amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. Retiring head brewer Peter Ells has worked for the brewery for 31 years. No one believes, I didn't actually drink till I was 18. I went into various pubs and I just love pubs. It was almost as if a whole new world had opened up to which I was suited perfectly. Passion remains undimmed. <laughs> Timothy Taylor's are known and loved for their three main beers, Landlord, Boltmaker and Golden Best. Landlord is a sophisticated pint and a prince of beers. Golden Best is a paler ale and more thirst quenching. And Boltmaker is a good traditional Yorkshire bitter. The best way of brewing is to lend a hand to mother nature. Nature produces the barley Nature produces the hops, it produces the spring water, it produces the yeast, and then there's that great blend, which is quite magical. It, it's almost as if it was God-given, that if you get it together and get it right, you've got something which is clear, it's wholesome, it tastes fantastic, and it gives you a lift. Let's not beat about the bush. And what Peter and his team used to create a pint of Taylor's has remained unchanged. Right, these are the four ingredients which make our beer. Firstly is the liquor. This is well water boiled up with salts. Next is the barley malt. Barley, golden promise, specially grown for us in the borders and in the Kingdom of Fife. That gives the body to the beer. Here we have our hops which add flavour and fragrance and aroma to our beers. And the barley sugar produced from the malt has to be fermented and this is our yeast. So, let's get on with Peter's guided tour. The first ingredient is water, and a pint of Taylor's starts 300 feet beneath the brewery. But if that water was taken from just down the road, it would have a very different taste. The well water we use, which in the brewery we call liquor, is unique to us. We have our own little patch, as it were, under the brewery. As water makes up 95, 96% of our beer, then obviously its flavour is inherent in it and very important. This is it. This was the spring, original spring well, and that is the old brewery. That's where all the beer was made. So the water started from here, was pumped into there, and I'm going to show you how we turn water, literally, into beer. Whilst the spring water is being boiled, the next ingredient in the recipe is roasted barley, which is called malt. The malt is the same as grapes in the wine. Different malts produce different flavours. We use a certain barley, Golden Promise, and as we're the only people to use Golden Promise predominantly, we have our own flavour from that. But to get that flavour, the malt needs to be crushed, the same way it has been for decades. Right, this is the mill room, and like it says on the side of the tin, Two mills, two sets of smooth rollers, 
And what happens? We crush the barley malt, and this is step one in making the barley sugar, which we're going to ferment and make the beer. This is grist from the mill. What the rollers do is crush the grain into coarse grits, fine grits, and flour. The next stage is mashing in, combining the hot water with the crushed malt. This happens in a huge vessel, the mash tun. Right, this is the lower floor in the brew house, and this is actually brewing the beer, as it were, because we're going to put the crushed barley malt. We're going to open a slide, admit hot liquor. This is the boiled up well liquor, which has been allowed to cool. It's been allowed to cool to 60 degrees C, 150 old money. And we're going to mix them together and make a big, thick porridge. The process in the mash tun can take up to five hours as barley sugars are extracted to create a sweet malty liquid called wort. At the bottom of the mash tun are slotted plates to act as a false bottom. That's going to act like a sieve and keep all the husk back. It'll allow the barley sugar, when we made it, to go through to the, down to the little trough and up to the copper. So, first thing to do is cover the plates, because otherwise it'll all stick like glue to the sieve. And that's going in quite nicely. One of the great perks of the job, certainly first thing in the morning, where you may feel a little weary, is to come in and get this rejuvenating smell. Well, the smell you're getting is a roasted malt flavour, a biscuity flavour. It's really fantastic. You don't tire of these smells because you need eyes, ears and smell to do brewing. We've got some salts here that um, we add. In all truth, most of the salts are put in when we boil up the well liquor. But for old times' sake, because they've been doing this since 1862, we still do it. When we have finished mashing in, we take all the sugar we want and then we drain off and what is left is called spent grains. This isn't thrown away. Still piping hot, the used malt is collected by local farmers and fed to their cattle. So the farmer likes it, the cows like it and we like it. The wort is now taken upstairs into a large cauldron-like brew kettle called a copper. This is gradually bringing the liquid to the boil before the next stage that makes Taylor's beers stand out from the crowd. We're now at the top of the brew house. This is where the hops are and where we put them into the copper. Right, these are Fuggles hops from Hereford. And we use three sorts of hops. There are Fuggles, Whitbread Golding varieties, Savinsky Goldings, they're from Slovenia. Now this, I've just broken open this hop. Can you see the yellow powder there? Looks like pollen. That's where most of the aroma and the flavours come from. Now this is a golden variety, which means that it's pungent, it's plummy, and it gives that extra zest that we're looking for in our beers. The hops are boiled in the copper for an hour and a half. Peter and his team stick to the traditional recipe of different hops to create bitterness and aromas for that unique taste of Taylor's. They're like herbs in a stew, think of that. And like the best chefs, we believe that fresh herbs are better than dried herbs, and they use different amounts, different proportions for our different brews. The hops give us aroma, they give us flavour, and uh, they add that something extra to our beer, the finesse. A floor below the copper, the flavours are further enhanced. The hop back separates the hops from the hot wort in a dramatic steam filled event. A new layer of aromatic hops line the base of this giant colander. Almost 55,000 pints of boiling liquid containing the hops in the copper come thundering down and filter through the fresh hops. The hop back process creates even more aroma and taste. 
but it's an extra stage that many other breweries now leave out. Once again, Peter and his team believe it further creates that special taste of Taylor's. Plates at the bottom strain all the hops out and the filtered wort is cooled before adding the yeast. This particular strain of yeast has been kept alive and used in every pint of Timothy Taylor's since the 1960s. The yeast is added to the cool wort in large tanks in the fermentation rooms. We've added the yeast. The yeast will grow tonight and then tomorrow morning it'll start fermenting, turning the sugar into beer. You are getting some hops coming off you're getting a yeasty smell because we've just added the yeast. And there's a bit of a je ne sais quoi, which is going to make the bit of magic in Taylor's beer. You're beginning to get it. It's not finished beer by any means, but you're beginning to get what's going to make our beer different. A day later, and it looks like this. The yeast has begun to ferment, and the magic is starting to happen. And as you can see, it's a typical ale yeast. It's frothing up cauliflower heads, that sort of thing, occurring, and it's going to come right up to the top of the vessel in the next three or four days. Near the end of fermentation, this excess yeast is skimmed from the top of the beer. A small layer of yeast is left on top to protect the beer from oxidation. Too much could cause yeasty flavours, and this harvested yeast is used in the following week's brewing. The yeast is over 1,800 generations old and helps give Taylor's beers that unique flavour and crisp, refreshing taste. Now this is the old fermenting room. Uh, this was put in in 1911, but it wouldn't have looked like this. There'd have been windows everywhere. Slate, vessels this high. These were put in in the 60s and 70s. Now the fermentation, you can see the tide mark. Everything's bubbled up for four or five days. We've skimmed off and then we've cooled back and it's the start of the maturation. Here, after seven days, you can see green beer and this is ready to go tomorrow to the maturation tanks. One of the things that tailors do that sets them apart from a lot of other breweries is mature their beer for longer than most. Like wine, beer that's been matured tastes better. It may be more time consuming, but that's the tailor's way. If you don't mature, you tend to get an astringent, harsh sort of flavour. And we believe that again adds to the finesse, it gives that little bit of quality which makes our beer different from others. Well, this is beer ready to be put into cast tomorrow. It has been fermented for seven days, matured for three, and basically it's ready. Whilst the brewing of Taylor's beer is very traditional, the recycling, cleaning and refilling of casks from the pubs is meticulous and very modern. With thousands of pints sold weekly, the cask filling team work tirelessly to provide beer to pubs throughout the UK for people who love the taste of Taylor's. What we have done is use natural living processes and we've used Mother Nature to produce something which we think is absolutely wonderful. We love beer, you know, eat, breathe, drink it. It tastes lovely. It's mild in strength compared to other alcoholic drinks. And it is really and truthfully the heart of a lot of people's social lives. It's only right the casks travel in temperature control lorries across the country, so they arrive at cellar temperature delivered cool from Keithley. And is the team's work at Timothy Taylor's ever done? Job's done when you drink it. <laughs> the actual truth of the matter is, as we've been around the brewery, you will know that we produce uh, our beer from the best possible ingredients and we take time through the processes. There's no shortcuts to good brewing. And although we're not saying we're the best beer that's ever made in the world, we don't believe as anybody makes beer better. Our greatest achievement is the beer. You delight so many people. You get so many compliments. The aim of everything we do 
is to have people really enjoy themselves. It's been a joy actually over, over the years to do that. Very lucky.